want to go into the word of the Lord right now? After observing things that are happening, this is truly the last day. In fact, if you are observant, Russia is trying to build back up the power that they used to be. And the Bible talks about the bear. China, the dragon is waking up. Russia, the bear, is crawling out of the cave and throughout all Europe, Eastern Europe, the bear is going to show the power. And then with what is happening around the world now, the grain is running short. Prices are going up. The famine is coming. In fact, they say millions is going to be affected, especially in Africa continent and some of the poorer Asian country. Food is going to be scarce. Price is going to be real high. But does that frighten you and I? No. We need to realize that God is in control. I want to speak to you and you that are online. Leaving your faith without compromise. This is the day and the time that you must leave your faith without compromise. The book of Matthew chapter 16, reading in verse 13, the confession of Simon Peter. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? They said, Some say that thou art Joshua, uh, John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood had not re revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter. Upon this rock I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever that thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciple that they should not tell men that he was Jesus the Christ. Simon Peter step out without fear and favor and say, you are the Messiah. You are the God that have become flesh. As what the prophet Isaiah and all the prophets Joel have mentioned, God, Emmanuel, dwell with us. And today I want to speak to you, you have faith. But your faith that you are believing and living, you must do it without compromise. You should not, in your faith, compromise what you believe in Jesus Christ. I'm going to start off with a funny illustration. Everybody li likes to laugh Sunday morning. So I'm going to make you laugh, and I promise you, you will laugh. There was this husband and wife that had been, that had, uh, been married for many years. And as all marriages go, you that are husband and wife, you will have argument. So it happened one rainy night. The husband and the wife argued. They argued over things that are not so relevant, relevant, just like the color of the curtain, buying what color car, 
by changing the sofa and so forth. So they have an argument. And then the other day, the husband, you know, talked to his friend. He said, you know, I had, last night I had an argument with my wife. But in the end, she crawled to me on her knees. The friend said, wow, that was impressive. You had an argument? And your wife, in the end, crawled down on her knees towards you. And the friend said, man, that is impressive. I have never had that happen to me. Yeah, the husband say, you know, the friend said, what did she say to you then? She said, you come out underneath the bed, you coward. There you are. Some of you miss it. You don't know. You don't. Uncompromising. You know? We cannot be covered in our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you remember Simon Peter, Jesus said, you are Peter, but upon me, this rock, I am the cornerstone, I am the rock of foundation. I will build my church and I will give you the authority, whether in heaven or on earth, whether to bind or to loose, you have the authority. But then, because Peter did not have the Holy Ghost, and so what happened? He denied Jesus three times. He was a coward. Yeah, he was a coward. And he cursed. I swear I don't know this man because he don't want to get arrested like Jesus. I swear. I mean, he swear. He cursed and swear. He was a coward. But then on the day of Pentecost, he, he cried bitterly. He realized, I'm weak. I don't have the strength, the guts to admit that I am his top-notch follower. He chickened out on his feet. And that's why in your faith, you must be uncompromising. And when Peter received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, suddenly it's a complete change, Peter. He's got gut. He dared to say, you arrest me, you can kill me, you can. In fact, he was crucified. No problem. It's because Jesus, he knows that Peter is going to go through his faith. Just like today, Jesus knows in your faith, you can chicken out of him. You can be like the husband. You know? Suddenly, the flesh overruns your spirit. Overruns the Holy Ghost, and then you chicken out. You say, I, I, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a fanatic. I'm not one of those apostolic. You try to subdue what you believe, and that is not what God wants you to do. You need to confess. Amen. And be constantly uh, uncompromising. Peter saw the true identity of Jesus. And because Peter acknowledged, confessed, proclaimed, Jesus is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, Jesus said, I give you the authority now. And today, you and I, Jesus has given you the authority. Whatever you bind in heaven and on earth, it will be done. You say, but who am I? You know, I'm, I'm just a, I'm just a saint. I'm just someone who has been baptized in his name and received the Holy Ghost. Well, you should not underestimate this union. You should not. Just like when you say to your wife, I do, you better do it. You don't halfway after so many years, you try to undo it. You know? This one man, he lost his wife in the supermarket. And he knows that the only way my wife will quickly show up, he saw one beautiful young girl and he started talking to the beautiful young girl. And the beautiful girl said, sir, why are you talking to me? He said, I lost my wife. And if I talk to you, you just give me a few minutes, my wife will suddenly show up. 
And sure enough, after a very little while, why are you talking to that young girl? You see, this man, he knows his marriage. He knows too well. The wife will show up if he talk to one beautiful young girl. So you men, next time you lost your wife in the crowd or in Pastor Malam or supermarket, you do that. You talk to another sweet young thing and then your wife will show up. Why are you talking to that young girl? There you go. You got the answer now from Pastor. Learn that. So anyway, Jesus knew. He knew. He knew Peter is going to deny him three times. Not one time, three times. But Jesus loved Peter. There is no such thing you are failure, you, you, you deny him that he will hate you. No, no, no. You need to understand. Jesus knows your makeup. What you are capable of. More than you yourself. And you need to realize that Jesus believes in you. Yeah? Come on, say, Jesus believes in me. As much as you believe in him and confess him and uncompromising, Jesus believes in you. You got to get that into your system. Jesus, believe in me. Wow. Yes. Jesus, believe in you. And if Jesus believes in you, he's going to do a great work in your life. You need to believe that. The enemy will come and tell you, oh, you are no good. You failed the Lord. You, you did this, you did that. That's the enemy. But your faith, you must say, I will not compromise. I already accepted, believe, and confess. He is my Lord, and He is my King. And He will be. And it is through living out your faith, just like Silas testified, you're going to feel God alive in you. You want God to be alive? Well, you need to live it out, your faith. Confess it. Be strong. Your faith needs to be timeless. And this is in First Peter. Later, Peter wrote First Peter. Let's turn there. Peter wrote First Peter. In First Peter, okay, and in uh, chapter 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Peter say grace, God's favor, and God's peace be multiplied to you. And in today, the world of uncertainty, we need the grace of God and the peace of God. Be multiplied in our lives. We need that. And then here in verse 3, he say, Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. This is where our faith stands. It's a lively hope. Your hope in Jesus Christ is lively. It wants to make your life alive. Okay? Okay? And then he went on to say, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you. This faith of yours, it's a lively hope. It's reserved for you in heaven, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. This is your faith unto salvation, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, 
if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Listen to me. Peter went through in his life the testing, the fear of the Sanhedrin, the council that is connected with the Roman soldiers, the empire, the authority. And so he had a, Peter had a struggle with his faith in his living along with Jesus when Jesus was arrested. He tried to be careful. You see, we can never be too careful with our faith. We need to be reckless in our faith. You cannot play safe. So Peter is writing to these people all over this region and telling them, I have gone through all that. And right now you are living in fear because the Roman uh, power that is controlling this region and persecuting you guys, you religious apostolic guys that is spreading, they want to subdue you. I know what you are going through. I went through that. And so Peter is trying to encourage them that they should not compromise their faith. You see, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. And this is what Peter is trying to tell the saints over this region that was under the Roman rule. Don't worry, because God in heaven he set it up, he moved it out, he is on the throne. And so today, you and I, in our lives, we don't know. Suddenly, our health is attacked, our finances, uh, maybe our job. And, and because you see, we are constantly, every day, getting up, facing adversity in our faith. My dear brother, when I talked to him in Hong Kong, Pastor John Chan, suddenly he threw this big one on me. He said, I have to close down the church. I said, what? You have to what? He said, close down the church. I said, huh? And then he said, you know, this is a new government. Now they come hard on churches, the new ruling. You cannot buy an industrial factory lot and turn it into a church. You need to shift out. After 40 years of having church, their own property, and you know, it cost 10 million. That's not cheap. <laughs> and now, the authority say you've got to move out. It's an indirect persecution because you know the communist, communism is of the devil. I will see it again. And I'm not afraid. They can record it online. Communism is of the devil. It's not of God. It is just like the Roman Empire. It's of the devil. But that doesn't mean God is still not on the throne. God is on the throne. Sometimes persecution like that, it comes. It's a wake-up call for the church. It's revival is coming. It's power. Miracles are coming on the way. God, people get shaken up. And now they are left without a place together to have church. What do you do? What do you do? And that's why in the conversation, he let me know so that this guy here can go and help him and seek God. And when I did that, God gave me a couple of answers. You see, I am my brother's keeper. I have to bear. All the years that I go there to see what I can do to help him. So I gather people like Pastor Bobby. So one brain is not enough. You use a lot of brains. And then you get the good results. So continue to pray for Hong Kong. Because it's under China now. Macau is under China. They are trying to take Taiwan. And they even want to take Malaysia. Do you know that? 
yeah, they are buying out all Asia if possible. Because the devil, his time is losing out. Just like over in Europe, Russia is trying to conquer. Asia, China is trying to buy out. I got money. You don't have money, I'll buy you out. And then eventually, that is how empire expands. And with empire comes ideology. And that is, you cannot be a Christian. You cannot be apostolic. But we do not fear all that. We know greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. They can't do no nothing. You read a storybook at the end, the winner is God. Not the devil. The winner is God. So you are on God's side. Timeless faith. And this is where in 1 Peter 4 and 5, this is what Peter said. Your faith must be timeless. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that faded not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. You see, he that endure to the end shall be saved. Your faith is going to be try and try and try again. And you got to make sure that my faith is timeless. You know, I, always when I pray and talk to God, I say, God, take me back to 1976. May, the month of May, where you touch my life, where I come to know you, where I was committed to you to this day, where I stand, and I inspire you guys, yeah, whether you like it or not. You like me, you hate me, or whatever, it's okay. I love you. I have to be here to inspire you. Our faith needs to inspire someone. It's timeless. We've got to keep moving. Moving forward. The question is not if we have faith. Everyone has faith, the Bible says. Even the communists have faith in their reasoning. And that's why they don't want God. They want to remove God out of their life. I have encountered with two, two uh, uh, French young communists believing the philosophy and the ideology of Karl Marx. I debated with them and we, we went so, of course they will not allow me to quote from the Bible. So fine, they tried to use the logical, critical mindset. This was back in 1970. Finally I say, okay, okay, let's stop here. We will see, one day you die, I die, we all die. Yeah, that's what I told him. You die, right? He said, yeah. I said, I also die. We all die. The answer will be, after you die, I die, we all die, then we will know. I said, I'll wake up, I will know. You will wake up and you will know. These guys are so silly and ridiculous. They say, no, it is like a, a switch. You just off it, that's it, darkness or nothing. They are trying to deny reality. I say that's what you hope for. If you switch off the light, the current is still there, the electricity is there. It's not going to suddenly, uh, you, you, you nullify the afterlife. It's not going to work. I told them. That's what you wish for. Because the, my Bible say, after you die, you are going to wake up. Eternal Eternity with God or eternity lost forever. So I leave them with this impact, this sudden wham on the stomach, and I say, have a good day. The Lord bless, uh, bless you. I mean, the Lord bless you. I told them, and I left. We can only be so good a witness if the people, whether they are communists or whatever, they don't believe in God Almighty, so be it, because one day, they are going to die. In fact, right now, I'm speaking to you. I don't know if these two guys die already or not. 
I almost died, but I'm still alive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know? I mean, this is reality. Whether you like it or not, one day, you will die. I will die. You cannot deny that. You cannot say, I don't want to die. Huh? You know, like the Bible. This guy, the day angel come, hey, 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 don't, stop, 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 stop. I'm very rich. Give me some time. Let me think about it, okay? The dead angel is going to say, you wish you can think about it. Time up. Let's go. That's it. Of course, none of us have died and come back again. The only thing is some of us we have experienced. Almost, like, almost, almost you kind of go into that sleep forever. Almost. But hey, this is the life. A time to be born. A time is going to come, you have to die. But the important thing is, while you are still alive, your faith in Jesus Christ, you must not compromise. No persecution. No the hard times you are facing. Because whether you are rich or you are poor, God is fair to everyone. You only die one time. Only once you die. And then also, Paul men uh, Peter mentioned to this Christian here, when they are going through the suffering, you know, in their time was under the Roman Empire. They were still persecuted because they were converting people in that region. And the Roman, you know, in their mindset, they think, if these people get stronger, they might throw the Roman government. You know, that's why they are fearful. Every government is fearful. Fearful of what? Fearful of these people in their belief. Because the moment they become bigger, they can overthrow us. So they try to subdue whatever you believe, whatever. But we are not for the government, not, not in a way to fight the government. We are for our faith. We can't care less. If the, this earth becomes one, you know, this earth is not our home. We are just passing through. Our home is up there. We, God Almighty, and Peter say, your faith in God is not perishable. Peter say, your faith is imperishable. You know, everything you have, even your clothing, even your shoe is perishable. Yeah. You will find, and that's why Peter likened it to gold. You know, if you have seen how they melt gold, is that when they cook gold under high heat, all the impurities will come on the top and then they will skim away all that, you know, uh, 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 irrelevant metal or whatever. They will skim it away. And as they keep doing that, they say, finally, you get what? Your weight in gold. Pure gold. And when you look at pure gold, it gives the reflection. It gives, the same thing, your faith is like that. When you skim away all the impurities and everything, finally you see Jesus face to face. He is pure. And He wants you to reflect His pureness, His goodness, His righteousness. So you are going through that gold process. And God is taking out all the impurities out of your life. So that the day when you see Jesus face to face, you are reflecting the one true God. Can you say amen? amen? And then also, Peter went on to say, uh, incorruptible. That means to say, no, nothing can corrupt your faith. You need to make sure my faith is not corrupted by any influences. The other day, I bought a box of oranges and I told that guy, check, I don't want Somewhere in the middle below, there is one that is corrupting the other oranges. And the guy goes, mm, okay. So I brought back the box of oranges, you know, pay the money. And of course, you know, we don't want any corrupted oranges. That means already start molding and then it will affect the oranges beside it. So I dig into it again and I found got one. Because it was sitting on the bottom, it was molding. And, and in, the, in the cartoon box, you can see a spot there. 
quickly I took all the origins out and took the corrupted oranges, uh, orange and then cut the section that is spoiled and ate the rest. I don't want to waste. You know, I mean, it is still good on the other side. It's only 10% the bottom is moldy, you know. Of course, you say, Pastor, that's terrible. Eat a, a rotten or orange. No, 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 no. I'm a very, you know, thrifty person. I don't believe in wasting food. Yeah, some of you, young fellow, will throw away, you are rich. La. You are spoiled. You're not thrifty. So I cut away the part, and the rest all I ate it and enjoy it. At least I don't waste my money. I still get 90% back. 10% waste, never mind. So corrupt, that's how one bad apple will corrupt the whole. And that's why your faith, you've got to make sure you don't get corrupted by your friends. Hello, they are not in the Lord. By some negative guy, negative girl, always die, die, die. Don't let them corrupt you. Your conversation. The other day, I, I was having a conversation with someone and they just complain and complain and complain and complain and complain. I just... Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, I shut my ear from all that. It's not edifying. You know? They are not happy and they want, to, want you to share their unhappiness. They want you to feel their pain. It's not doing good if you just listen to them and say, Ayo, yala, sayang, ayo, mm, ayo, so. Why do you want to do that? You allow the person to corrupt you, your, your spirit, your mind, your emotion. And so, next time what you do, because this person, I don't want to offend them, you know, they have been long time and all that. Lay hand and pray for them. But I cannot, I was, you know, long distance call. I cannot put my phone, my hand through the phone and lay hand and pray for them. So, it's so important, your faith, don't let your relative, your office friend, the worldly people, or even the ones that think beside you now, they are not happy and they want you to feel unhappiness with them. Don't. You know, the Bible got the answer. If you are going through trials and the persecution of faith, go and pray. That means to say you need faith. You need God to touch you. You know, back in 1980 plus when I was starting my ministry, I've gone through. I've been fired from a job. No money. I feel so useless, just like what Brother Silas has mentioned, so useless and all. But thank God I did not allow the enemy to push me into that spirit of condemnation, of self pity, and then of mourning and groaning. I did not. In fact, I went and prayed. And I said, God, like Jabez, you bless me and extend my border, give me abundance. Rather than drowning and complaining and groaning. And when I did that, whoo, God bless my life. The money comes in. I got a good job. I got I, I, able to buy a new car. You know, I was able to get a bank loan, buy the house. Before that, all the time renting. And then the landlord don't feel like it. Okay, you shift out three month notice. And I shift there, and I, my wife thought, you know how wives are like, they, oh, set up everything. Suddenly, not even five years, okay, you shift out. So, I pray and I ask God, bless me. You see, your faith, if you are not uh, unfading, this is what Peter said, your faith is not fading away. You don't fade yourself out of your faith. You'll be strong in your faith. You'll be steadfast in your faith. You keep saying, God, my faith, not corrupted, not fading away. And that's what God wants you to have. Don't allow adversity. Don't allow pain. Don't allow anything 
to affect your faith. It's precious. It's like gold. Every one of us here in life, we have gone through. Yes, I have gone through. You have gone through. It's not that we have not gone through. We have been to the hospital. We have been out of the hospital. We have been without money, jobless again. But hey, your faith in Christ Jesus, it's an inheritance. It is precious that go. And God wants you to be unfading in your faith. Your faith has to be tested. If it is not tested like gold, how can you get pure gold? If your faith is not being tested, how can it be pure faith? Faith that is going to go into eternity. Faith that is going to declare that even everyone run away, I will be still for Jesus. I will be still standing for Jesus. And this is where it's going to Cause the world to say, wow, what a faith this fellow have. Everyone run away, he's still standing and declare, I have unfading faith in Jesus Christ. We need to declare, folks. When we are going through, when it is high time to call, have faith in God. Jesus say, why are you so fearful? Have faith in God. So today, I want to say to you, and those online, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Amen. And Peter went on to say that your faith, uh, in verse 7, has got value. It is valuable. He said, the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory of, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. When Jesus comes, he wants to find that your faith has got that substance, that value. More than gold. You know, some of you have gold. Right? You keep it. Why? It has got value. And today, the gold price is going up. And you're happy and you're singing the song, why the gold price is going up. It has got value. You see, in a world when there is war and all, uh, back in the 70s when Vietnam was overrun with communism, the people that migrated to America or migrated out of Vietnam, what did they carry? Not US dollar, uh, not Vietnam dong, uh, and not anything but gold bar yeah there was news that these guys they found on his body wrapped around 27 pieces of gold he tried to run away from vietnam from the overrun with all the war thing he's got gold wrapped around his body because that is going to keep him alive at least he has got gold with him and gold is valuable folks so your faith, gold can perish, but your faith is unperishable. Your faith, remember, is unperishable. And God is reminding you, your faith has got value. If anything has got value, friend, your faith has got value. Always be reminded. And then eventually... Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1 say, Now faith is the reality of what you are hoping for. The proof of what is not seen. So the essence, the essence of your faith is that it does not require sight or proof, but that your faith is reality. Because of your faith, my brothers and sisters, we have been tested every day. That's right. But you need to remember your faith is valuable. In the eyes of God, in the day when He comes, He's going to find faith. He's not going to find any other position, name, and so forth. And, you know, He's going to look faith. Because when Jesus died on the cross, on Calvary, He said, It is finished. 
And then the apostles say, it is by grace, God's unmerited favor, and your faith. You are saved by faith and grace. Jesus loves you enough. Jesus values you enough. But your faith, it is your faith that is going to move him. In fact, he went to one town. He couldn't do much for the people. You see, Jesus is a lover of giving good gifts to everyone. But the people stop him. Why? They are fake. They couldn't. They couldn't accept he's the Messiah. They couldn't accept that he is the one that come and dwell among them and give them good gifts. He could, they couldn't. And so the Bible is very sadly recorded. He couldn't do much for them. What about you today? Your faith is in God. And I'm here to tell you, God wants to do great and awesome thing in your life. But it is your faith. Your faith will cause him. You, you got to be like that fella. God, I, I believe, but somehow my faith has been attacked and bombarded. But God, help me in my faith. Help me. Jesus helped Peter. And Peter became uncompromising in his faith. And Peter got the authority. Likewise, I will tell you, God has given you authority. You got the Holy Ghost. Power has been given to you. But you got to, in your faith, declare it. I and my faith in God, he's going to do it. Let's all stand. This is the time to center on God. Don't so much center on yourself. You need to center on God. Because the Bible say that throughout the Bible, even in the Old Testament, Amen. God used from Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph is because of their undividing faith. They have faith in this one true God. Jehovah always with them. In fact, God told Jacob, what do you want? Let me go. But Jacob said, how can I let you go? I've come too far to let you go. God, I cannot let you go. And then God said, okay, ask me what do you want. I want to be used by you. I want to have power with you and I want to have power with men. That whenever I cry out to you, it's done. You are Jehovah, my strength. You will do it. And then when the man come against me, I'll be able to tell God, like King David over Goliath is going to fight my battle. The same thing God is going to do that. You got to say, God, my faith in you, I'm not going to compromise. I'm going to let go. But God, you are going to give me the authority. Whatever I pray in heaven and on earth, it is done. It can be done. Because I'm not doing it, but God, you are doing it for me. You are going to be a champion. You are a champion. Don't let the devil, the enemy, you know, at one time, the devil used a fella, and he, he didn't know better. I mean, God blessed him. He said, Leo, you will preach to chicken, to cows, to goats, to uh, whatever, you know. So today, I look at you, you are not chickens, you are not cows, you are not goats, you are not... I mean, this guy, he, he was so mean. Because I did not give in to his ways. So when I packed up, go into my car, I said, in Jesus' name, I'm not. God, you won't allow me to preach to cows, to chicken, to goats. No, no, no. Today I look at you, my God. Thank God you're not chicken and cows and goats and all. Hallelujah. I mean, that's what people, the devil used people to attack you. But greater is he that is in you than they are in the world. I say this, greater is God in you. And God is in you and God is in me. He's greater than all these things in the world that is trying to affect you. So don't let them affect you. Stay in your faith. Don't compromise. It's valuable. 
don't let it fade don't let it get corrupted by all these surrounding don't get it corrupted by this world your faith and god wants you to know this morning is precious in jesus christ let us all pray let us all reach out to god our faith everyone has got faith but the bible says build up your faith in the holy ghost build it up you need the holy ghost amen your faith is timeless your faith is what god is going to look at when he comes have faith in god amen